After last class, I had a very interesting question, which I would like to share with you, all of you. Hmm. We were discussing that the source of happiness is consciousness, but the same entity who was a source of happiness to me, the same consciousness can also produce annoyance in me. Suppose somebody gave you a lot of happiness and consciousness was the actual factor which was giving you happiness. The same entity can also annoy me at certain times, isn't it? The same person can say something which I don't like and I get angry. So how can I say that uh, what is it that is actually giving me happiness and what is it that is making me annoyed? The thing is, you know, some particular trait of that mind I'm not liking, that is producing the annoyance in me. And I have equated with the person with the mind. That is why I feel the pain or the annoyance or whatever. You understand? We equate people just with their minds and their bodies. That is why I am not able to connect in any deeper way. I am not able to see the person as consciousness enlivening a body and mind. So today we will go into something from the Upanishad which will teach you how to learn to think of things things in, term, in terms of their actual reality, the truth behind them. They are appearing as body and mind, but there is some light of awareness shining through every being. So this particular story which I am taking up today, it is a very important story, quoted many times. It is the story of Shweta Ketu. Some of you might have heard, it's from the Chandogya Upanishad. It will teach you how to think of others, how to perceive this world. When they make se sentences like, this whole world is nothing but God, nothing but Brahman, what do they mean? We will take up this and then we will go into, again, yoga psychology, neurophysiology, your practical problems into all of that. Mm, so let's start with this very, very elevating idea from the Upanishads. Now this is the story of Shweta Ketu. He was the son of a rishi called Uddalak. Uddalak Rishi. And this Uddalaka had uh, great hope in his son. He was the only son. And he wanted him to be a man of great learning. So he started teaching his son. After some time, he thought that it's better if somebody else teaches my son. He has a preceptor, a greater guru. So he sends him to another uh, very great rishi. Uddha, uh, Shweta Ketu was 12 years old at that time. And he goes to that preceptor. He learns many things over a period of another 12 years. He learns all the subjects that were available at that time. He learns the Vedic lore. He learns the Upanishads. He learns about the Vedangas, the Nyaya system of thought. He learns Kavya. He learns grammar, Niruktam, everything. And then he comes back after 12 years. And then Uddalak notices that he has, he is now a man of great learning. He has a tremendous intellect. But he is a little arrogant. Mm, vidya Dadati Vinayam. But this boy has not got that Vinay. So one day he calls Shweta Ketu to him and says, Look, my son, what have you learned? And then he gives a whole list. Father, I have learned this and this and this. And then the father says, Very good. But tell me, have you learned that knowing which you know the unknowable? Have you perceived that? Perceiving which? You know that which cannot be perceived merely by the senses, but, but which gives you complete fulfillment. Have you known that? And then Shweta Ketu says, No, Father, I have not heard even of anything like this. I don't know what you are speaking about. Then Uddalak says, Didn't your fa uh, teachers mention anything about it? And he said, Maybe they didn't know anything of this kind, what you are talking about. What is it that you are talking about? And then the father said, Look, as by knowing one lump of clay, you know everything that that clay is made up of. So also there is one substance knowing which you will know the actual essential essence of everything in this world of manifestation. So then Shweta Ketu thought, this is something very interesting, but what is this? Please explain it to me. And then we will stop the story here to go into the explanation. Knowing one lump of clay you come to know everything that that clay is made up of. This is what he's saying, isn't it? Now you just take this thought into your mind. What is the meaning of this? Suppose we make something out of a, uh, out of clay. Suppose we make a pot 
or we make a ladle or we make a jar. Now the claim that the Rishi is saying, if you know its essential content which is clay, you will know everything about this. The formations of clay, the pot, the ladle, whatever. Now what is he trying to say? tell us here? You see, let's just take the example of a pot. Is a pot different from clay? Clay in a particular formation is called pot. Clay with a name and a form and a function is called pot. Isn't it? Is there a separate reality called pot? Apart from clay. Is there? No. Clay uh, pot is nothing but clay in another form. With another name. With another function. Now tell me one thing. I will ask you a few questions based on this. Can I say that that thing which is appearing as pot to you. Is it more clay or is it more pot? Think and tell me. It's more clay. Why? Because the clay can exist apart from pot. But the pot cannot exist apart from clay. It is only clay. It is through and through clay. It is clay in a particular shape and form and name. So, the clay is the reality about the pot. Let me put another question here. Corresponding to this word called pot, is there a separate entity? Suppose you don't think of clay for the moment. Corresponding to this idea of pot, the name of pot, is there a thing separate from clay? Is there an entity separate from clay? Is there something called potness apart from clay? Can you show me the pot? If I say I will take off the clay, you show me the pot. Can you show me? There is nothing called pot apart from clay. See this. There is nothing called a wave apart from water. There is nothing called ornaments apart from gold. There is nothing called color apart from electromagnetic radiation. It appears as color to your equipment. So also, there is no nothing called a world apart from Brahman. Existence, consciousness and bliss. And you are that Shweta Ketu, he says. You are that Brahman appearing as this particular entity with this name, this form. They are talking about you. You are that essential consciousness appearing in this form. You see, you, you were not born with a label, isn't it? A name was given to you. As you grew up, you attained a particular form. You got a particular personality. These are all upadhis added on to you. What is your essential substance? It is that consciousness. Just like how there is nothing called a pot apart from clay. There is nothing called a wave apart from water. There is nothing called you apart from consciousness essentially. The name, form, function, everything changes. Isn't it? So then now can I say, observe this carefully. Can I say that the pot is an appearance of clay? I can say that. I can say that the wave is an appearance of water. Or the bubble is an appearance of water. I can say that color is an appearance of electromagnetic radiation. I can say you are an appearance in Brahman. The supreme reality. This is Advait Vedanta for you. You are nothing but that supreme reality in a particular name and form. You are an appearance of that supreme truth. This is your real identity. The unchanging part of you is that consciousness. The light in your eyes. You are more the light in your eyes than you are those eyes. Learn to identify yourself with this. You see, this is what Vedanta is pointing you towards. Your own unchanging identity is this. You see how logically they have led you to this, this point. This is the teaching being given by the Rishi to his son. Learn to identify yourself properly. Even logically you, are, you can understand. You are functioning as a part. You have invested your entire energy into that formation called part. That name called part. But the essential thing about the pot, its essence is the clay. If you give too much importance only to the name and form and function, you will lose sight of the essential element, the substance, the substratum, the clay. So learn to identify yourself rightly first. Unless you have asked, who am I? You will not track the actual subject. Unless you know the subject, how will you relate properly with the object, with the objective world? You see, this is the next step which he is going to teach Shweta Ketu. How to relate with others. 
if you have not identified yourself properly known yourself as you truly are the unchanging you unless you have at least an idea of this how will you relate with others properly when sh- when he gives this knowledge to shweta ketu his ears perk up shweta ketu and because he's an intelligent young boy and he tells his father tell me more about this father what is this reality about me which i am seeing i am seeing the clay only as the pot tell me more about this clayness and then uh, udalak rishi tells him my son you see this huge nyagrodha tree that nyagrodha means banyan tree mm all of you have seen banyan trees so you see this huge tree now come on get me a fruit of that tree and he runs up and gets a fruit of the tree then he says cut open that fruit tell me what is there seeds are there the seeds are so tiny now break open a seed what do you find there a tinier portion a tinier reductionist technique of science cut open that and see what is there finally well i don't see anything then the rishi says uddalak says that which you are saying i don't see anything that thing has the potency of this huge tree it is unseeable maybe you can't see it with his ordinary eyes you cannot know it just like that because you can't see it but it holds the potency to manufacture to manifest as this entire tree vivekananda used a word for this he said the tree is an evolved form of that which you cannot see that is an involved potency which manifests as the tree involution he called it so you see the actual potency of something which is vast and manifest can be something which you cannot even see but that holds the essence and something like your genetic code you see that is responsible for the whole human being isn't it it's already written encrypted there what that human being will be like can you see your genes or the chromosomes you cannot see your genetic code but you you have instruments to track it so also the essential you you cannot see it you cannot hear it so long it's it has not been perceptible to the senses you cannot find it through the senses but you can intuit it through your own mind through meditation you can turn your mind back to that source and that is the real you tatvamasi shweta ketu he says you are that essence which is manifesting as this tree which is manifesting as this human being even as you cannot see the essence of the tree in that seed you cannot see your essence just now as an objective reality outside of you na sandrashe tishthati rupamasya na chakshusha pashyati kashchanainam you cannot see it as an object in front of you you cannot see it as these with these eyes because they are tra- trained only to see objective reality they are turned outward isn't it but this essence is right within you because consciousness is your essence you function as conscious beings your mind becomes conscious your body becomes enlivened you are that consciousness o shweta ketu he is telling you you are that tatva masi shweta ketu now shweta ketu got all the more interested oh he is talking about my real essence so he said tell me more about this and then uddalak muni said okay son get me a pot of water and he brought him a pot of water and the sage took a pinch of salt and dissolved it in that water and then said can you see this the salt now in this no father i can't see it then he said taste the water and see taste it on the surface how is it it is salty in the middle how is it it is salty at the bottom how is it it's salty the salt has pervaded the water the self pure consciousness pervades your entire personality structure that is why your mind starts functioning that is why your intellect becomes brilliant you start understanding things it gets enlivened that is why your body appears to be some conscious entity and you immediately identify with all of these and you think this much only is me but you are essentially the clay functioning as the pot please remember this you are the water functioning as the wave or the bubble you are the gold essentially functioning as an ornament temporarily so the the whole problem is our mind is so interested in the formations of consciousness it loses sight of the essential substance just like how logically he is trying to prove this to you actually you can experience this if you get into meditation what is the essential part 
of me. When I say I, what does it signify? What do I mean by I? You can turn back the mind to its source. There's a technique to do that which we will discuss later on. But you see, by following this kind of a logical course, what, what do you come to? What is the conclusion he is trying to make? You are that, essentially, O Shweta Ketu, he says. You are that salt which has got dissolved in the water. You are that essence of the seed which manifests as the tree. You are that lump of clay which manifests as pot or ladle or whatever you make out of it. Tattvamasi Shweta Ketu. This is the story. This is, if you learn to perceive yourself as this essential thing, consciousness itself, you will learn to perceive everything as another manifestation of that consciousness. Isn't it? It is again an appearance of that reality alone. So then you learn to relate with others properly. You learn to relate with the world in a mature way, in a spiritual way. Otherwise, how will you see others? If I learn to look upon myself only as body, I will see only as body. If I see myself only as confused thought, I will see you only as confused thought, only as mind. So learn to identify yourself with the essence of your being. This is what he is saying. Vivekananda bar bar ye kehte the. He used to say, he has given many lectures on this. In Gnan Yog lectures, you will find the real man and the apparent man. You have identified with the formations of consciousness, with the manifestations of consciousness. So you think you are only the body and mind. You are essentially the Atman, pure consciousness functioning through this. So learn in some way to identify yourself with this. And your very worldview will change. Vivekananda used to say, what is this world meant for? Many times we ask this question, na? Ye sansar kyu hai? Ye creation kyu hai? He used to say, it is a moral gymnasium to help you take exercise and become strong. To help you go back to your source. And see the reality of things as it is. See, just now you yourself told me the reality is clay appearing as pot. The reality is Brahman appearing as this world of diversity, multiplicity. If you analyze your own being, you will see you are essentially awareness functioning through body and mind. So also is everybody else. You are that light shining in your eyes, the light of awareness functioning through a body and mind. Or a bahut sundar anecdote, let me tell you here. It is from the life of Raman Maharshi. Aapne suna hai Raman Maharshi ka naam? Hmm? He was a saint, uh, a sage of Tamil Nadu, Thiruvannamalai. Once somebody asked him, Aap ye follow ki jay, bahut interesting hai. Somebody asked him, Why is there this creation, this world? And he said, Look, can your eyes see themselves? Can your eyes see themselves? Your eyes cannot see themselves. What do you require to see your eyes? A mirror. So that man said to Raman Mahashi, I require a mirror to see my eyes. Then Raman Mahashi said, Creation is the mirror in which your eyes sees itself. Catch this point. Creation is that mirror in which your eyes sense sees itself reflected. This is the Vedantic concept which I am trying to give you. Others, last class we have discussed what do others mean? It is I in another form, functioning under another name. The same awareness is getting manifested through everyone under different guises. Because we identify the person only with his body and mind, we don't see the simple truth. We see only the parts, we don't see the clay. We don't see the essential water, we see only the wave or the bubbles. The foam. We get caught up in that. So much me arai apko. Yes, sansari kya cheese hai. It is that mirror in which you can see yourself reflected. If you see yourself reflected, you will relate with others in a deeper way. In a in a worshipful sense. Vivekanda Yahamesha kate the world is there for you to worship and see, worship God there. Because essentially it is awareness manifesting through different forms. Isn't it? This is the actual reality of life. So, thoda search ke dekho. Advait Vedanta is telling you reality as it is. When our confused mind comes into operation, you will only see the formations of consciousness. You will see the manifestations of consciousness which are body and mind. So, you identify people only with body and mind. 
you understand this is the mistake we make this teaching is taking you to the heart of things the source of things to reality as it is 